Hey there gamers, good morning. GM John coming to you from the Grumpy Old GM's Game Shop's Basement GM Academy, where we work to bring out your inner greatest GM. So a series that we're working on right now is the play styles of gaming tables. And we're kind of studying or laying out different play styles uh, that I've experienced over the years in the last 40 years that I've seen at the table, or maybe some of them I've indulged in myself. But we all approach the game from some point of view, and some a lot of people that play the game will not necessarily just do one of these play styles all the time. And then there'll be other tables that just that's the play style they want all the time. So to adjust your GMing for different people, let's take a look at another one today. And I did promise a video with some examples of simulation and emulation that's still coming up. I have so much, so many video topics. I could probably make more than one of these a day and still not be catching up, it feels like, because stuff's just piling up that I need to do for y'all. Um, but don't mind, don't mind at all. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how we can look at this thing we do called gaming and maybe uh, help our players be a little better and make us a little better GMs. So the play style that we're looking at today, I call the looter play style. And I've seen this done to different degrees over the years. Uh, and today I'm going to use a really extreme example uh, to get this across. Now, other people have done the looter play style over the years. They haven't gone to this extreme, but I think this guy really like makes a case for it, really shows you what it, what it could be. Uh, now, this particular guy came along into my life very early in my gaming career. So I was still in high school and college, and I wasn't the quote-unquote forever DM yet. So I was actually a player at the table. Um, not this guy. This isn't a story about me. Um, but I was a player at the table in this guy's group, and this guy did all of what I'm about to say. He actually did it in secret with notes to the DM. Uh, and I found out later... <laughs> But uh, because later I inherited the campaign and I kind of became the forever DM and stuff like that. But what this guy was doing for a while was he would pass the DM a note behind the screen and he would say, I loot everything that the party doesn't take. Um, and sometimes the notes were as simple as that. But he, he acquired pretty early on in his ad character's adventuring career, he acquired a portable hole. And then he would like upgrade, like he eventually upgraded the portable, or excuse me, not portable hold, but a bag of holding. He got a bag of holding at first and then upgraded it to a portable hold later. And then eventually he very careful not to mix them, very careful not to put one inside the other because we know that causes an extra dimensional accident. But being very careful with them, he eventually acquired multiple bags of holding and portable holes. And he would, uh, he would take every dagger off of every goblin he would take um you know e you know every little piece of armor off of every bandit that was uh killed on the roadside you know their their leather armor was was worth something you know used leather armor maybe it needed to be patched because the person who wore it just got killed you know just got stabbed to death so maybe that leather armor needed to be patched or something but you know it was worth something it was worth you know, a few gold, it wouldn't be worth, you know, player's handbook book price anymore. But this guy took absolutely everything. Um, and then he would, while the rest of the party was doing other stuff, while the fighter was starting a bar brawl in the tavern, while the mages were going to the library to see what sort of knowledge this town's library had, or while the, the party was trying to shop for magic items with their treasure that they'd gotten from, you know, the main... Uh, treasure of the going through the adventure regularly the looter guy he would go down to just the regular peasant market and he'd start selling stuff um, and this guy was always always thinking about this and the rest of us had no idea just how much wealth this guy was was accumulating you know slowly at first and then it would just snowball because uh, as the party would get like at one point the party was just Resting, They were just having a rest period. They were camping in the wilderness overnight. Um, and the party had stopped to kind of role play in character around the campfire a little bit. And this guy just asked the DM, are there any herbs around? 
at this time of year in these woods. And instead of role-playing with us, his character got up away from the campfire and started looking for some herbs um, in the uh, in the woods. Now, he didn't go too far away from the, the light of the campfire, though, because in a D&D forest, you get too far away from the campfire at night and, you know, that's you're inviting the DM to attack you as some kind of night creature or something. But he didn't go too far away. He just started looking for, for herbs in the woods. Um, and uh, he'd sell those. At one point... Um, he found a wild walnut tree and he harvested walnuts and he went to, uh, when the party got to town again and he went to the little peasant market, he sold bushels of walnuts that he had picked off of a walnut tree himself. Um, and, uh, so the, the ultimate one though was, uh, I, I told a story uh, several videos ago now, but it, it's the Junior Magic User versus the Frost Giant. So if you want to hear that story, you can go back and, and listen to that video. But in the story of the Junior Magic User versus the Frost Giants, this um, the Frost Giants had the were in a glacier that was over a mile thick, and they carved their caverns out of ice the way that caverns would normally be carved out of rock, and so. You know, I mean, and the ice never melted, you know, to speak of. And just, it was just complete, that ice was so cold and so permanently frozen, it pretty much was like just rock. And so the, we were fighting frost giants. And after these frost giants were defeated, this guy, the guy that would harvest walnuts from a wild walnut tree, the guy that couldn't sit still long enough, didn't care about role playing around the campfire, um, let's say, are there any herbs in the forest? Uh, this guy that took every goblin's dagger, he took, you know, every piece of enemy armor off their dead bodies, just left them naked, um, any bit of their clothing that looked valuable at all. So he, uh, uh, after we you know, were killing some frost giants and stuff, we'd stop to rest, and and the uh, this guy would ask the DM, what are frost giant clothes made of? And the DM, who wasn't, wasn't me yet, uh, the DM said, uh, well, uh, frost giants probably wear clothes made of bear skins. And the guy said, uh, the looter guy said, well, aren't bear skins valuable? And so he whipped out his collection of portable holes and bags of holding. And he, uh, he took all the bear skins off of the frost giants, left them naked. And, uh, you know, and he started asking now all of the, you know, the party had, you know, usually grabs things that are, written about in the story, whether it's a module published story, whether it's the DM's homebrew written story, but the group usually loots things like a magic ring of spell turning on an enemy's finger or ring of protection on an enemy's finger or something. But this looter guy, he started looking for innocuous things. He started looking for things that weren't necessarily magic items, things that were just on the on the enemy's body for uh, for story flavor. Because he's like, you know, the the giants, you know, they're like from Viking stories and stuff. They're like wild Viking barbarians. They have any earrings, and the earring on a on a giant would be like a big old hoop, you know. <laughs> I mean, that uh, you know, it would be like something you'd wear, like an armband or something for a large human, you know, or even bigger than a human's armband. And uh, so he was actually cutting off the earlobes of these frost giants to to harvest their giant earrings and stuff. They weren't magic items. Uh, it was just he was asking the DM well, what would be there and having the DM make up you know, what their bodies probably looked like. You know, yeah, they probably did have earrings and stuff. And their earrings would be, you know, would be like uh, big giant hoops to us humans because they were giant earrings. So this guy eventually became just super, super wealthy. He had so much money that it was obscene. I mean, that uh, maybe if, if D&D was real... Um, and this guy really had adventured and survived all the adventures and accumulated all that, that wealth that maybe he would have, you know, uh, in a realistic way, maybe he would have started thinking about retirement or something with that much money. Um, but, you know, he was always thinking, what's this worth? What's this worth? What's valuable? What can I sell? Um, I mean, I'm sure that uh, if eBay had existed in the D&D world, he would have been like the eBay king. Um, so that is, uh, now he's not the only person who's ever done that at my table or at a table that I've been at, but he is like the ultimate example of it. Um, so I, another approach I've seen people take sometimes is they'll make their character a merchant. Um, now they might be a mage merchant or a, um, 
you know, or a fighter merchant. Or you could even be a cleric merchant if your deity is like Joaquin from Forgotten Realms and is like the goddess of money or something, the goddess of commerce and trade. But, um, and obviously you could be a thief merchant, but um, you know, the you just kind of hyphenate your character. I'm a mage hyphen merchant. I've seen people take that route with this, you know, to, to set up business. Um, but yeah, that is um, that is definitely a play style that can be kind of interesting. It's not for everybody. Not everybody cares about that when they play their fantasy game or their D and D. Uh, but that's another one: the looter play style. In the meantime, if you appreciate the content, if you're getting something out of it, or if you want to get more out of it by having me or some of my fellow grumpy old GMs contact you personally on telephone or Discord, uh, you can join our GM Academy at our Patreon down below and get personal contact with what's going on with you and your games. Um, or game with us. Those links are down below. Hang out with Discord, social media with us. Those links are down below too. In the meantime, I'll see you around the gaming table.